TNTM The Show presents... The July Recap with your hosts... Pablo Gunner. Slay J. Marvin Goof. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about all the nerdy stuff that came out for the month of July. Which is going to include all this stuff. San Diego Comic-Con, there's that stuff coming out. We're going to talk about that real quick. Deadpool and Wolverine review, it's going to be a spoiler review. The Acolyte, that one's also going to be a spoiler review. The Dragon Show, what is it? House of the House Drago. of the Dragon. We're going to talk about that. It's not going to be hugely spoiler. We're not going to go too deep. going to get into it a little bit. The Boys, season four, that one's going to be a spoiler review. We're probably going to go a little deep on that one. Cobra Kai, season, season six, part one. I don't know if you guys watch it, so we'll see. Uh, Star Trek Prodigy Season 2, Axel F, Mini Bluey, or uh, Bluey Minisodes. The Imaginary, which is an anime movie. Near Automata Version 1.1 Alpha. Hitmonkey Season 2, TP Bond Season 2, the Dr and The Dragon Prince. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And share our content if you don't mind helping us out. Yes, and our grade scale here at TNTM The Show Talk Nerd and Me is... Must see, must stream, check it out, pass. So let's talk about San Diego Comic-Con. The San Diegans. Oh, goodness gracious. Always good. Every oh, year. Oh, San Diego. Take it in. So the biggest one that I want to complain about is they announced RDJ as Dr. Doom. Victor Von Ro Doom. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey mm -hmm. Jr., yes, to be specific. So... I personally, I, like, the announcement is cool, but it, to me it doesn't make sense because I go, like, you're not bringing him back as Tony Stark, or a, unless he's a variant of Tony Stark that is Doctor Doom, that I'm cool with, but if it's not, then I'm like, this is dumb because you're taking away, you're taking away work from somebody that, that has, like, a thick, you know, like, break off Russian country accent, or has a really good one, which I don't know, he might, he might do one, I don't know. I, th I say we just kind of just let them Wait. Eat, let them cook. cook you know okay. what I mean? Because what if it turns into something where it's like, okay, now after Thanos killed him, something happened. Maybe he came back as like an evil spirit. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> no, but done I, weirder I, things in comic books. Oh, totally, you know, absolutely. I'm thinking oh, it's it's a scroll introduction. Well, I mean, we've seen it in the shows, but now it's making its way into the movies is the scroll, and they're kind of set up the secret wars. It yeah. Very, uh, it very well could be the thing. And I mean, Pablo, I admit, I think I'm at an opposite of you when it comes to this, because I feel like Robert is just a good actor, right? And I am I'm kind of with you there. Let them cook. Let them see what happens. I'd like to see what Dami can do when he actually has a villain to actually indulge himself in. I think it's going to be a little interesting. Well, you can't deny that the moment, if they have this moment, which would be stupid not to have that moment of if they somehow knock his helmet off and then see his face, whether he's a variant, I'm assuming a variant, so he won't know them, but they will think he's Iron Man. Everyone's going to be like, how, why, how could you do this to us? Like, you know what I mean? Like that moment would just destroy people at their core that like their greatest hero is now their greatest villain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But he even said, like, in the same clip, new mask, same task, which is protect the Earth. And that really has been Dr. Doom. Like, like even if he's the ruler of it, like, he's run his own country and he's ran it well, right? Like, yeah. they're prosperous. Everyone is safe and, and everyone does well. Everybody has food. Everyone's housed. Everybody's, you know, doing well. So it's not like, yeah, he's a dictator, but he's the only successful dictator, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Like, in... Marvel history? I don't know. But anyways, yeah. So it, it could be done. It could be. Russo brothers, especially because the Russo brothers are the ones that are going to be helming right, they're those back. movies. They're back for, for those two movies. Doomsday and for Secret, Secret Wars, Wars, which is great. It's going to bring a lot of continuity in. You know, we, if you guys saw Deadpool Wolverine, which we'll cover soon, they kind of retconned a lot of things to kind of help set up the future for the MCU. So, mm -hmm. and I think having this RDJ announcement this weekend uh, at the Comic Con, right after Deadpool came out, it's just bringing a lot of steam to back to the Marvel universe. 
Agreed, yeah. It's been, it's definitely felt like kind of controversial ground, unfortunately, for the past few years, but I feel like there's a lot of promise in what we can see, and especially, well, we're going to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine later. Right, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But <laughs> ultimately, I think a lot of what they're moving towards is going to be interesting. There's a lot of good, positive things in there. So. But the cool thing is, is they talked about other movies that are coming out, mm. which is going to be Blade, which I can't wait for, I can't wait for that. You're going to have to. But I, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't either. Uh, so that's, that's going to be great. Especially after seeing Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, whole other discussion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys seen it, you know. You get the hype. Uh, yes. But uh, And then also, they talked about the Thunderbolts. They, um, they mentioned Fantastic Four. They showed a clip. First steps. They, sh they showed a clip, actually. I've seen the clip of the movie, and it looks really solid. Um, but they're taking it down like on TikTok, you know, like right away. But it looks cool. It looks really awesome. Awesome. Can't wait for that. It's like 60s tone and feel and vibe. So, has it been confirmed that it's pa Pedro Pascal as, oh, yeah. as uh -huh. a Reed Richards? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. It's going to be great then. Yeah. Everything that guy does. Just is total just daddy vibes. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Marvel he is the, daddy. He's yeah. the eternal family man in almost everything he does. Yes. So, yeah, he can do well. <laughs> Last of Us, Star Wars, mm -hmm. now Marvel, across the board. Oh, heck yeah. So yeah, and, and like you said, Thunderbolts, they have a thing for that too, so that's, it's going to be all kinds of crazy. Mm -hmm. So, I just think it's weird too, because they have also announced that the, uh, that Celestial is made out of adamantium, and now everyone's going to be trying, and I'm like, why though? That sounds kind of dumb. I don't know. To me, that just sounds dumb, because it's not really what it is, but, but it's, it's also its own universe, so they can do whatever they want at this point, so I'm kind of like, we'll see. Once again, like you said, like, if it may, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then stupid. Is that, are we good with that? Yeah. Let's move on. Deadpool and Wolverine? Oh, <laughs> or, or should we call it Deadpool 3? <laughs> Could be Deadpool 3 or Deadpool Wolverine. Yeah. I because it did, it did a solid job of both. Like, Indeed. of being the third movie of a trilogy and of being a Deadpool and Wolverine movie and, like, a send-off to Franchise the Fox. Or... Yeah, yeah to like every Fox, Fox X-Men stuff. Movie, yeah. And as well as like a new entry into Marvel and MCU, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like a good reintroduction into the Marvel in universe as they were getting rid of their Fox past. Yeah. I will say the bad for me, like the beginning was a little confusing to me and then the ending, I thought it was over and then they threw some more stuff in there. But they did such a good job of sucking me back in that I was like, okay, it worked. Like, you guys were able to pull it off, stick the landing. Because I thought, well, the landing was the landing, and then you're like, no, we're going to do some more flips and woozy doozles and, you know, flipsy bobsies. And then they, but they stuck the landing. So I was like, okay, I can't complain. You know, like, you guys did it. It was a little long, but, like, I had a good time, even though it was long. So, yeah. Yeah, it was a great movie. Those are my only complaints. It's, uh... It's gonna be hard to find the people that are against it, cause only the only thing that I've heard negative was at the very beginning was were the critics given it just like a low 50, 50 score or something like that, and I was like, what? Are you, there's no way? And then after seeing it, I'm like, if you guys saw our video, they're dumb, they <laughs> are completely wrong, and I don't know where they're getting this from. Uh, there was a there was a story in this. It had a climax, and it resolved a lot of loose ends. Mm -hmm. uh, as we mentioned, it retconned a lot of things to kind of set up the future. It was done great. Like, there was stuff that was answer answered from the first movie, stuff that was answered from the second movie, and it just created this whole new parallel between these characters, which we hadn't seen before, especially in Deadpool. Like, we get a deeper sense of who he is, and where he's going, and where his heart is. And you finally see him become the hero that he always wanted to be, but he was always too selfish, and he finally overcame a lot of monsters to do so. Yeah, I would agree entirely. Like, the, the, interact, the interaction of a lot of things, and 
I mean, on a filmmaking standpoint too, I mean, visual gags are a thing, and I found that a lot of the visual editing was also hilarious. Uh, you know, everything kind of served the tone of the film. So I think that was, they, they did good. Why would people say this is bad? I don't get it. <laughs> so. Well, critic, cause critics have always hated these movies because they're like, oh, I have to watch every show and every movie, and, or they have to watch the things connected to that, and they just want to go, a movie should be a movie and it should be its own thing. Look, I didn't, I've seen the other movies. I haven't watched them recently. I, I, you know, I love the MCU, but I haven't watched all this stuff recently. I don't have the time for that. I have kids, so even if I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to because it's rated R, right? I'm not going to do that. I felt great just rolling into this, you know, and just having a good time and enjoying it. And it was a blast. Like, to me, I go, that's, this is what a movie is. That's what a movie should be of this caliber, right? Like, it's a Deadpool movie. Like, it delivered on what a Deadpool movie is. And then the fact that it was the third of a trilogy, it was perfect to wrap up, you know. I mean, yeah, it opens up for more into the new universe, but it, it was so superb. It's, I feel like it's on par with those other trilogies, such as, like, Captain America and Guardians as well. Like, it's that good. Because why? They put the core of it, it's about the characters. It's about his family, right? Like, his chosen family, his friends. That's what he cares about. That was the focus, right? And that's why... And they've done the same thing with Guardians, right? Like, it was about, hey, this rockets our family. You know, all these char you know these things, they're character-focused, and that's why it works, because you care. I mean, you may not care about those characters, but you care because he cares. Exactly. And, I mean, I don't know if y'all watched the Hot Ones episode that him and Hugh Jackman did, um, but even Ryan Reynolds made a point saying that sometimes things get lost where it should be character focused right mm -hmm. i think all three of the deadpool films have really established how well making a character or the interaction between characters the focus of everything is makes it something successful so i completely agree uh, that's i think that's what makes them so good and they're all dirty and really hilarious <laughs> you know that that's the, it's it pulls it off in such a good way so yeah let's <laughs> talk about the cameos man oh my god Oh my god! Fantastic! <laughs> Mind blowing! Holy cow! I was not expecting Blade. No, gosh, not at all. Blade not at all. all. Did not expect that one bit. <laughs> I'm so and excited. Gambit was fantastic. Holy cow! Phenomenal. Channing Tatum does a great Cajun accent, and he plays that part very well. It was perfect. I thought he was so perfect. I don't want to see anybody else in that role <laughs> because I genuinely don't believe anybody could do better. That's how good he was. Uh, and the fact that we did get to see them, you know, get to see all of these figures fight, like, the dream of seeing Gambit's powers that way, yes. Oh, gosh. Because Electra? Like, yeah. That was definitely, true. like, I don't know, I mean, I didn't see any of the last spoilers up into it, but Electra was yeah. absolutely, like, right. didn't expect that, at least that version of Electra coming back, man. And that, that has to speak <laughs> with the retcon, and they did a great job of kind of, like, giving those characters an end so they can kind of, who knows, we might, you know, we're definitely going to see Blade in the future, but we're probably going to see more of them. And they better bring back Channing Tatum as Gambit. They better. <laughs> yeah, Great. yeah. Especially for me, as someone who said Channing Tatum is the worst choice, he's way too big, he, he's, he's way too bulky, he doesn't have the acting caliber, he proved me wrong. He proved <laughs> me wrong in every single way in this. Like, he just looked perfect. He sounded perfect. Everything about him was perfect in this. Where I was like, "Give this man, give this man a, another job to, where he's being playing Gambit." Like, you have to. Yep. You absolutely have to. Find an excuse. Find him a good rogue. Mm -hmm. Find him a good rogue. And I like. I can just imagine the X Men film in the new approach to all this. I want Alexandra Daddario. Oh you know, as, yeah. As rogue. Yeah. And then boom, done. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Those two could even have their own movie together, you know? <laughs> and I, I'm all for it. But yeah, yeah, the cameos were insane. The jokes were insane. Like, even the Electra's jab on Daredevil, <laughs> on Daredevil. which <laughs> seemed felt like more of a jab to <laughs> Batflick or... To Ben Affleck. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it felt more like that. But it was... But it worked in it, right? Like, it was so perfect, and that's what... You know, like, all the jokes, so great... Johnny Storm was phenomenal, even? That. Oh, my God. That was the one that fooled me the most. Because I'm sitting there so excited. 
it's Chris Evans. Oh my God, Captain America's here. <laughs> Captain America's here. <laughs> and it completely blew my mind. And of course they made a joke to that. That was great. And oh yeah, a running yes. joke. Uh, X-23 showed up. That, mm. That's awesome. The, the, yes. Uh, they, Cassandra Nola was great. Oh, I thought perfect. she was a great villain. Uh, that's not a cameo, but she's, she's great. And whoever that actress was, was did a great job. I, I made it feel like she was really Xavier's sister. Yeah, I, I kind of hope they bring her back like in an, as another variant or, or in another way. Like, that version could be dead for sure, but, right. you know... Yeah, right. and then we see the TVA in this. There's just a lot of stuff that kind of interconnected. It was like them tying the the ends together to bring Deadpool and Wolverine over. So you know, and they even make a joke that Hugh Jackman's Hugh Jackman's gonna have to carry Marvel until he's ninety, <laughs> which is <it's> probably true. <laughs> oh god! After after this time, I admit, like that, that's got to be another thing that crosses his mind. Do do I do this again? With how popular this movie is, do I do this again? <laughs> I think he's down. <laughs> It seems like, like he's down. Yeah, and not like an old man Logan, like one of the variants that shows up. Mm. Like I would love to see an old man Logan movie that is different from the Logan legit, film. like yeah. the comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then all the different Wolverines was great. It was just such a beautiful movie. It's a definite must see. Must oh yeah. See. Oh, Henry Cavill. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, the Ca Cavalrine. Cavalrine. Oh, comic accurate Wolverine. Oh, oh gosh, no. Oh my gosh. Perfect. Uh, uh, oh, they had a lot of nods. There's the patch one. The what's the one where he's on the X? The oh yeah, I forgot. What I know what you're talking about. Too. Days of Apocalypse. Wolverine. Age of Apocalypse. Age yes. of Apocalypse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. Many so things. many. And oh, it makes fun of it. Hulk. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh, the Hulk appearance. You make it makes fun of itself a lot right. too. Like yes. how they're like, oh yeah, you have to watch episode. Season one of episode five of Loki, <laughs> Loki. or whatever, yeah. <laughs> so it's like kind of helps you out, I guess, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was really funny. Like I didn't feel like I had to watch all that. I mean, I've seen those, but I, it definitely didn't have to be fresh. Mm -hmm. I felt like you could just walk in. Me, I don't know. Maybe you in can't a walk in perfect Deadpool fashion of like the fourth wall breaking constantly, which was great. Mm -hmm. yep. We needed that. Ryan Reynolds is perfect for this role. He always has been. Yep. Great job. All the Canadian jokes were great. Too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done very well. It's a yeah, definite buy from us. Oh, for sure. Yeah, heavily. Right? Absolutely agreed. All right, cool. No argument, I guess. No argument. We're going to roll into <laughs> House of the Dragon. <laughs> Falling in fire. So, and, and I was telling Slagey this. I said, you know, I... I it's a well-written show. It's, it's a good show. I know the stuff that it's based off is well-written as well, but it just feels messed up because these people are all inbred, and yet they're regarded as the most powerful. It's mainly because of the dragons, but they are the most powerful. And if I was making this show, I would, I would make it so that all the Targ Targaryens would legitimately all have Down Syndrome. Legitimately. <laughs> but then it would... Because then, then it would probably be a more like a sitcom. Um, but the thing is, is like I just don't. I, I like I have a love hate relationship permanently now because of that finale from from the previous the original show. Game of Thrones, yeah. Yes, and so once again, like, but I still can see like the flaws at least in the writing, which is they brought this dragon in, and I want to say like episode three, they had this dragon fight, epic, awesome. They killed off, like, the only likable character in the entire show because everybody else sucks and they're trash and they're garbage. And that's another reason that I don't like the show. I don't understand this idea of people watching shows where they hate all the characters and they literally have nobody that they're rooting for. And so... And, and once again, like, okay, if, if you can't find a person you're rooting for and you're one of those people too, then, yeah, there's no reason for you to watch it, right? Mm -hmm. So if, like, Acolyte, like, you couldn't root for anybody and that's what keeps you watching, then fine, stop watching it. I feel like I, I have to. Well, I do have to for this. And so... It, it, but the but just the fact that they would do this epic fight in, like, so early in the season and not leave it for a season finale makes zero sense to me. Now, it makes sense, like... I'm sure in the boo books it works better, right? Because books are books. And the thing is, is, like, they're not as episodic as shows are. That's the thing, too, is that, like, yeah, chapters are... But still, like, it's just not the same. And so it just doesn't not work as well. 
I mean, there's still interesting characters, and the show's still solid, but all in all, what are we all waiting for? Another dragon fight. We're all just sitting there going like, that was cool, give us another one. That's what we're waiting for. Because everything else is just boring political BS until that point. Like, that's all we care about. I mean, there was well, some... I mean, are they... Do they still have, like, the sex factor of the show? Because it wasn't that, like, the big draw for Game of Thrones? Early on, yeah, there was. And and I think there was, once again, in the, in the first season, there was more of that. In this one, not really. Because the people that were actually doing it now, they're, like, beefing because, you know... Well, first of all, they shouldn't have been doing it now like they can because just how things are going and everything like that and whatever. So it's just, uh, I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's still a well-written show and it's still a good show. There's just, it, I just feel like it could be better and that's, that's it. Like it's not, what, what it's not bad. What makes this popular in your opinion? The dragons. Like people want to see dragons fighting and uh, I'm, there's attractive people in it, okay. you know, and it, and it is still Game of Thrones, right? Like that's the thing is people that saw Game of Thrones before, they go, I still want good th Game of Thrones because it was good. Mm -hmm. There was a time when it was good and we want that back. And that is Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is slow and it is political. But, I mean, this is also House of the Dragon and we're here to see the dragons, the dragons. fight and mm -hmm. we're the fall of the dragons, like why there only becomes, well, no dragons, right? I think there's no dragons in Game of Thrones, the previous one, until those um, eggs were hatched, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not a bad show. I'm, I know I'm, it sounds like I'm trashing on it. I'm really just focusing on the bad. But it's still a solid show. I, I will say I still think it's worth checking out. It's not like the best, you know, at least for me. And I'm not saying that for everyone. I'm saying for me, it's, it's still worth checking out, but it's not a must-see. So mm. check it out. Yeah. Okay, check it out. I might do that. Uh, have you guys seen The Boys Season 4? Not yes. yet. Yeah. So back to political. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Political satire. Yeah. This so is... I do know that this was written two years ago, so it's it's just weird that it's lining up. The very last episode, they had to put a, a warning, a trigger on. warning, mm -hmm. at the beginning to uh, say, oh, hey, there's some events that's going to happen, which is they talk about the assassination. They don't really show an assassination. It, it's... You know, it's it's not it's you know they kind of set it up to where like, okay, the, these people are going to be over here and they're going to take out the president. You know what I mean? That was in the previous episodes. That didn't happen. It kind of just went off script, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I I feel like it has gotten funnier since we did the last the podcast last and how we brought up like yeah it's a little more heavy handed on making fun of. MAGA, but it's not actually calling MAGA out, right? Like, it's it's the satirical version. It's their own version in this show. But I feel like it's just gotten funnier. Like, but they are making... And they're making fun of both sides. Like, they'll even mention AOC by name and talk crap about her. So to say, like, oh, it's one-sided, it's not, you know? Mm -hmm. So they, they really are. And that's what they've, they've even said, like, the vice president. They're like, oh, that's like their little AOC, which... And it does not end well for it. It did not end the way I expected either. I, no, I did no, it did not expect that to happen huh. at all in in that finale. Like there's a you lot were, of crazy stuff. You that were happened. kind of expecting okay something. When are we going to see Butcher and Homelander go at it again? That's not this season. They're setting that up for next season, which the, this one had a lot of juxtaposition where it's setting up for season five, but also at the same time you have this uh this roadblock with butcher's illness that's happening with him that's potentially going to take him out and then we kind of find out it's more of a mental thing it's turning into a mental thing and it's it's done really well you're seeing like this metamorphosis of butcher from the whole like pure-hearted individual and now he's getting more kind of dark yeah like the pure is his 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 ex-wife or his wife yes. that died. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the evil one is this dude from his army past or whatever. Which is Negan from The Walking Dead. Oh, snap. Well, it's not actually Negan, but it's Jeffrey D. Morgan. Mm -hmm. It's a new character. He this doesn't have guy, a barbed wire bat or anything. <laughs> Some like people... the, he treats you guys like you're morons. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of multiverse stuff going on right now. I just want to make sure that people... 
<laughs> make sure I'm that there's sure not a crossover <laughs> with Walking Dead. Yeah. You know, that's all. <laughs> or that maybe Butcher was, Juice is a huge fan of Walking Dead. So IEW, <laughs> right? Was it IEW that does uh, IDW? Yeah. IDW. Yeah. yeah. And uh, who does the boys? I don't know. They're they're they might be IDW as well. I'm not That'd sure. That'd be crazy. Okay, um, then then maybe they okay, could do it. They could be. I don't know. A good point then. So <laughs> <laughs> I retract. <laughs> but yeah, it, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on, like the the crazy sheep that could fly and. Were like cannibals and stuff. Oh, and then there was like the sex dungeon thing. That was nuts. You like finally Huey get really to took see. One. You finally get to see some booty. Starlight. Starlight. Starlight booty. twice, right? Yes. We don't know if it's actually her. Once again, we talked about it. Could, could be, be a fake. stunt, but but I don't think so. It was very oh, yeah. quick, so yeah. I don't think it was either. It looked pretty legit. I don't know. So this is for nerdy after dark. <laughs> <laughs> this specific, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll put this one. But yeah, it was. I mean, it was a solid. Uh, Huey really took one for the team for that sex dungeon. He really, he really took one he for did. the team. Like, he did. oh my! I, I don't know, but actually, I'd kind of, I'd hit that. I'm just saying. Huey? <laughs> no, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because I saw someone refer to him as a twink, like on something, and I'm like, I guess oh, yeah, man. that makes sense. Um, but <laughs> the ambassador's gonna have to cut a lot of stuff. Be <laughs> <laughs> a nightmare for him. Um, he's gonna be rolling his eyes the whole time. But <laughs> oh, oh man, but it, uh, it's it's done so well. I I was I couldn't wait for Thursdays to come by because the show was. It, 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 it told a beautiful story, in my opinion. And it threw in, like, you know, the gore that you want to see from a superhero. Kind of gives that more realism, right? Yeah, this is something that's not been done. And I feel like with each episode, it did get better and better and better. Like, so, from where we left off, yeah, it just got escalated in so many ways after that. And you see Mother's Milk, which is skim milk now, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you saw an arc in his character, too. Mm -hmm. Like, in his leadership... And then the dynamic between it was pretty much killing him, being so he he has like more of like an understanding where why Butcher is the way he is mm -hmm. to be the leader of the boys. So yeah, because he used to give him so much crap and everything like that, and he and so now he understands. I mean, it, it was mostly mental for him because yes. it was like hives and he had a panic attack. So, but and even for him, he had that arc of like I have to do this because even if I run away from it with my family this problem still exists for the world, you know? Mm. So, and, and oh, A-Train, that was a great turn. Uh, yes. You know, that was, I, I hope we that's see... A good, that's a good redemption arc for A-Train. I hope we see him again. And they do a the great finale. job where, at the very beginning of the series, you know, the infamous, right? Mm -hmm. A-Train runs into his girlfriend, and now he has that vendetta. Now this season, him getting that uh, V for Huey's dad... That just like the whole, and then him just oh, he, he keeps he keeps do, uh, doing redemptive stuff to to get by, and it's 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 great, and it's gonna set up. I don't he 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 uh, he ditched town, but you know he's gonna come back. He's for a the, speedster. He's gonna come back and uh, help. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, when it comes down to it, yeah. But I it is wait. a must see, must stream. Yeah, I I don't care about your political positions. Throw those out the window. It's just making fun of stuff that's happening for real. And it's not saying that one side's better than the other. There's no agenda in this. It's a good show. Just enjoy the story and and, ta and try to step back. Because I, I feel like like he stated, both sides are getting made fun of. And we should be able to make fun of both sides. So, again, I'm preaching again. So. Well, mm -hmm. as you said, this was made two years ago. Yes. So I think this just... As a similar problem with uh, South Park, is they said they made a season about our politics, but then things would happen that were the same or worse than what they had already made, and they're like they either had to change it or then it just wasn't funny anymore because it was just what actually happened. Because our religious, I mean, our our political thing is so ridiculous now, mm -hmm. you know, that it's just crazy. It's just insane. Yeah. But yeah, I will say. Because I said that it was only worth checking out before. And at that point it was. But after the finale and everything, it's definitely a must-see, must-stream. Gosh, I gotta catch up on stuff. <laughs> I, I need more money. Anyone got anything out there? <laughs> well, right. we'll, we'll hook you up. <laughs> oh, we'll hook you yeah. up. <laughs> 
So if you want to donate some stars for him, yeah, for that's you. Yeah. Or whatever they call him on any platform. <laughs> yeah, give out your Venmo and your whatever so people can Marvin get this goof guy. It up. <laughs> so next, uh, Cobra Kai season six part one. Did you guys watch? Not, not yet. Regrettably, oh my goodness, I got I got stuff. I sh I love this show. It's so good. It's just. It's, I mean, if you watch the other ones, it's it's just it's Cobra Kai, but it's just continuing it. And there's some interesting stuff like uh, who's the main the main bad dude that's Cobra Kai? He goes to like uh, another country where he actually learned it. I want to say like Korea or Vietnam or something. And he went to like his master and was like, "Hey, we can compete compete in the world tournament. Let your guys." compete and it was like the granddaughters now like running it and so they're teaming up to like compete in the world tournament and um and, and face off against um the miyagi Do, which it's like miyagi mixed with uh it's not cobra kai because he he made his own spin-off that was like eagle fang that's what he calls it he called it eagle fang eagle fang eagle fang yeah, okay. so it's like eagle fang mixed with miyagi Do, and they mix their logos and stuff and it looks really mm. legit and cool but they kind of clash over that, right? Because this partnership is new of them doing Miyagi-Do and, and essentially Cobra Kai doing both. And so it's, it's kind of like a power struggle and thing, struggle thing too. So it, it, it's really interesting and it's really good. And then also the, the players, because they've combined their dojos, now their best have to compete for the biggest spots. And you see like how that's affecting the kids like mentally and everything like that and it's interesting and and how it messes things up that were seeming like they were getting healed and then now it's 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 messing things up but it's it's really good it's really interesting and once again leaves on the cliffhanger because it just goes to like that's the setup like that's where they got to is they just have their players set up and then next is going to be i think the fight yeah, i think the next is going to be the final i don't know if it's going to be the final part but this is the final season where they're going to have the tournament. And I think it's just going to be straight up, you know, just karate. Because they, they find a way to work karate into every episode when, like, <laughs> they don't really need to. Like, they went to, a, they went to like, these colleges and then ended up at, like, a frat party. And then, of course, a uh, karate fight had to break out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they it, it just had to. You know, like, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it, it's, 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 I mean, if you've seen it before, if you're into that stuff... It's an absolute must-see, must-stream. If you're not into it, this is not a good place to jump in because you're going to be like, you don't have the build-up. You don't have, you have to watch everything. And I think it's worth watching everything else. But, and I don't think you need to be a fan of the Karate Kid movies, but it helps a lot, obviously. But they give you so much in the making of the, of the show that you don't have to, right? Like the flashbacks mm -hmm. and stuff, and especially in the early seasons, that you don't really need to watch the other stuff. I didn't re-watch it for the show you know so yeah cool good to hear yeah did you guys watch star trek prodigy season two not yet no okay so that's animated and the way that it's edited it's actually edited like it's made for tv because they work in the commercials but i think it is a purely netflix thing but you can tell that they cut it for tv so it's a little like you i don't know it just bugs me because you can see it right i mean yeah. i think they've they're working commercials in now. We don't have that yet, but the I the thing is, I watched the first season before the second season was out, and then when it came out, I wasn't done with the first season, and then I finished it. But anyways, I did watch both, but the first season was so good that I was just like, man, the second season is not as good. But it's different though too okay. because they start doing that too, where it's like they incorporate more time travel and more like messing up of the timeline and stuff and, okay. and how you got to fix stuff and and but then they incorporate more characters from the other shows like this actually incorporates um a lot of characters from uh i think it's next generation i want to say hmm. or the one after that it might be deep space is it deep space nine it's one of them yeah. um which is the one that had the the lady captain Voyager, yeah. Okay, then it's that one. That's the one that has a lot of characters from Voyager. Okay. It has a lot of characters from Voyager. So it's a huge... And and I didn't really... I'm not, like, hardcore into it, so I didn't know, but I knew of them. So I was like, oh, that's cool, but I don't know them super well. But I feel like they did them well. I think they did them well. So I, regard, regard, despite the fact that it's not as good as the first season, 
I, I still loved it. The kids enjoyed it too. The kids got sucked in. They enjoyed it. Oh, and so, good. yeah, it, it was good for the kids too. Like they, they liked it quite a bit. So because of that, I feel like it's definitely, it's, it's definitely worth checking out for sure. It's definitely worth checking If you're into Trek, it's a must see, but if you're not, it's still worth checking out. Okay. And I mean, I admit I am in, into it, then I just haven't watched it. I, it might have been just because I think it's been marketed as a kid's show. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I probably have to get into it myself then. It's certainly. really good. Especially since I liked Voyager a lot, but that's just me. So. Yeah. <laughs> Damn Trekkies. <laughs> Did you guys watch uh, Axel F? Oh, not yet. I heard good things, though. So Why it's the yeah. Axel Foley movie. Somewhat, what, 20 years later? I don't know how many years. I, I don't want to know. I don't yeah, want to know. Don't even, don't yeah, do the math. Who knows, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I probably shouldn't know. I'm old. <laughs> but it's, an, it's everyone and they're old, and it's him back to Hollywood, and everyone's like, you know, in that like retirement age, or should be retiring, or their last, their last mission, their last leg. It was good. It was fun. It was enjoyable. But from the get-go, the thing that I missed the most was his laugh. He does not do it the entire movie, not even once. Oh, wow. And okay. I saw an interview where he said that that was his real laugh when he did the movie, and he had to change his real laugh to not be the same laugh because people would even come up and be like, dude, do the laugh, do the laugh. And so it was just like a thing. But why? Why? Like, I, I, I don't know. I just... I don't know if it's a rights thing or what because they had everything else in there. They had a lot... The same characters, the same actors. Like, it's crazy... Like, it was an enjoyable movie. Kevin Bacon was a great villain. He always is. So many so many good moments. But I, I was just like, you didn't have the iconic laugh, and it kind of killed it for me that it was, like, missing that essence the whole way. Because, like, I saw the moments where, like, it would be perfectly placed, and was, like, and it was just void, you know? Mm. And, and, and it hurt it. I genuinely feel like it hurt it. Like, I won't say, like, it's... It's like the greatest thing ever, but it falls in line with the other movies. Like, if you're a fan of the other movies, watch this one. If even if even I feel like even if you're not, it's still worth watching, for sure. It's worth mm -hmm. watching. I just feel like it does hurt because it it, it just doesn't have his iconic laugh. Ah, dang. But, yeah. but it has the, all the other elements, you know? It has, it has all the other elements, you know? And, and, man, Eddie Murphy still has it, dude. He still kills it. <laughs> he still knocks it out of the park, so... And everybody else was really solid too, but uh, so it, it's definitely worth checking out. Now on to uh, well, so Bluey minisodes, um, they're just mini episodes of Bluey, and of course they're a blast, and they're great for the kids. And yeah, we we have them playing almost on a daily basis, if not more. It's great. I hear so, it makes adults cry. So oh, I've seen I've seen some things. These ones Bluey. won't because they're so short. Like it's just well, maybe I don't know. There was one that was. Uh, they're really cute, you know, they're cute, adorable, you know, these ones are short, so they, I don't think these ones will make you cry so much, but they're they're just fun and short. Good. Good. So yeah, um, I mean, if you don't have kids, I don't, I wouldn't suggest watching them. I think there are some people that do, but if you have kids, must see, must stream, and you can definitely watch them with your kids because they're great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did a you, good message, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you guys watch the Imaginary Anime? I have not. Movie? So this one has some people from Studio Ghibli. Okay. And it has that same tone and feel and look, but there's so much in that movie that is just filler that you're like, this could be cut out, this could be cut out, because the emotional points hit hard, but then it's just filled with this filler. It just feels like like they're going like, oh, this is to build to that, but you're like, no, we didn't, we, we didn't need that to do this like we're good without it and it just it just was not it just was not studio ghibli level and it just was like visually yeah sure but it just if they would cut that stuff out i think that it would be a really great movie but because it's it's in there it's it's worth checking out and i feel like it definitely could have been like a must see but it's it is what it is okay did you guys watch near automata ver version 1.1 alpha so this is based off of the video game, <laughs> right? Right, right. <laughs> and so that's why I watched it because I'm not a hardcore, hardcore anime person like my wife or the ambassador. And I was like, I'll I'll watch it because it's based off the video game, and it pretty much plays out the video game, but 
it's so boring. Like, it feels so bo Like, even as somebody who played it, I'm like, I'd rather play the game because it's an immersive experience, and I just feel like this is not... I, I wouldn't even suggest this to people that are like, oh, you don't play video games? Watch this instead. It's too boring, you know? Oh, like, you, my, I can even say that because my wife was like, I watched it, and it's boring. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, that's what I was thinking, too, just because I watched it and I was bored. But I was like, well, I already lived it because I played it, you know? Mm. So play the video game instead. It's, it's not bad, but it's just the better version is the game. So just play the game. The, the game is a, is a, a must-play you know, it's it's. I I got it through Game Pass. It's not out on Game Pass now. Mm -hmm. I'm t I'm tempted to find, look up how much it is because it's definitely worth replaying it. It has great replayability because you learn more about the story the more and more you play it. Interesting. It's one of those, okay. and you can play these different characters. You can switch between the two characters. Mm -hmm. So it's really really cool. So this is more like a commercial for the, for the game. So I wouldn't. I would say pass on the anime if you want. Check it out, but. It's going to be a pass, and the game is is a buy. Uh, Hitmonkey, did you guys watch Hitmonkey Season 2? Regrettably, no. <laughs> no, don't don't regret it, because I watched the first season, and it's, it's essentially what it sounds like, which is there's a Hitman monkey, Ooh. but the, he has like a sidekick that is a Hitman, and that sidekick Hitman is Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> <laughs> being like the biggest d bag he can possibly be, and he's helping he's helping uh the hit monkey. I watched like maybe a s episode or two of the first season and I was like, I can't stand this uh oh. I, I I was like i and then I was like, I'll try to get through the second season for this, and even so, I was like, I couldn't do it it was I just, I can't, I can't. I mean, Jason Sudeikis is great, but he, it's not enough. You know what it is, too, is that this feels like a Archer clone, but you mm -hmm. sucked at it, right? Oh, like, no. visually, yeah, it looks great, and but you went like, hey, can we do this, but with, can we do Archer, but with Hitmonkey and Jason Sudeikis, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it just, it does not land. They even threw in that, that one chick, that one uh, black lady that's hilarious that used to be on SNL. But yeah, like, and, and it's it's just it's just not worth it. It is not worth the drudgery. Like, there's just, I mean, visually it looks great, but it's just not it's not worth it. It's it ends up being a pass. I like the first season's a pass, second season's a pass. Then I dodged a bullet. Great. Yes. <laughs> Did you guys watch TP Bond season two anime? So I because of this I got through the first I got through the first one and the first one is pretty solid. I think it's worth checking out the first season. The second one, they switch it up, and the chick that was in the first season, she's like, oh, I'm leaving to go do something else. And then the kid that was the trainee is now an officer, and he has a trainee, which is this girl that is like a friend of his. And it just, it doesn't, it hasn't been, it's not as good. It hasn't been as good. It's not bad. It's just not as good. It's just not as enjoyable either. I mean, it's worth checking out, but it's just not as good so far. Mm. Did you guys watch The Dragon Prince Season 6? Haven't yet. So that they is want to stop asking us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the last one. <laughs> so it's a phenomenal show. I watched the first. I think I had watched up to season three and was a few episodes into season three. And so this one, I was like, I'm not gonna watch all the other seasons. I don't have time. I just jumped into uh, season six. You can't do that with this. I was way too lost. And it was good, but I was just way too lost. So then, but my kids were so into it, they wouldn't let me turn it off. Literally, it would stop and they'd be like, Dad, we're watching this. Press play. So they, they got into it just fine. They enjoyed it the whole time. And so when we finished it, we went back to the season three where I left off. And then are getting caught up. And I, as getting caught up, I'm going, oh my gosh, so much of this new season is making so much sense to me now and is like wow this is a really good show if you watch it all you can't jump in on season six well i guess, I guess if you're a kid you don't care and it works mm. but for me i i wasn't it wasn't bad but it just it i couldn't do it and now i'm now i'm like i have to i don't i don't think i need to rewatch this rewatch it but i need to get caught up and, and we're having a great time watching all the previous episodes so I feel like it's hard to say 
Like, the kids enjoyed it, and, and I think if you're following it, it's a must-see for sure. But just watching it on its own, it's not a must-see. It's worth checking out, but you're going to be lost. So watch, watch it from the beginning or, or, or get caught up. So, yeah, then it'll be a must-see. I'll check that off then. Excellent. Cool. I'll start from the beginning. That is, uh, that's pretty much all we have for Have you watched SummerSlam? No. I'm just kidding. Tell me about <laughs> SummerSlam. SummerSlam hasn't happened yet, but it, it will uh, by the time this video is out. Oh, will it? Uh, so, SummerSlam is WWE's, like, midsummer Super Bowl. Yeah. You want to call it? Mid-season, mid-season finale, I guess? Oh, or what, I don't know what you mm -hmm. want to, what you want to consider that, but there's some great matches, um, LA Knight versus Logan Paul for the United States Championship, which I can't wait because Logan Paul has only defended that title twice in the past six months. He needs to give it up. He needs to give it to LA Knight. He's an up-and-coming megastar, so he, he's been refusing to put his title on the line. Oh. Which he does randomly come and wrestle and then randomly doesn't. Like, he had... He's been doing a lot of Mr. Beast stuff. I don't, I don't know if you keep up with this guy. You probably don't. But um, only because I started watching some Mr. Beast stuff, I saw him on there. So it's like he's just too busy for for that. He's a great wrestler, great performer, good athlete. So is his brother. Um, but I understand why they get so much hate because they're, they're tool bags. So. Yeah, they deserve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is the bloodline calling Roman Reigns out for? So what they did was after WrestleMania, after Cody beat Roman Reigns for the uh, Undisputed Universal WWE Championship, it's just the Undisputed WWE Championship now, after that happened, it's like Roman kind of took some time off to go act. He, he was doing some acting and stuff. Oh. What they set up was they, they had the bloodline going on, and then Solo Sequoia was the, was the enforcer, and he kind of took over. And now he's creating a whole new group. A bloodline they kicked out Paul Heyman they threw him through a table nice. uh, <laughs> you know oh, it's, wow. you know the, all the stuff that you go to wrestling for right you mm -hmm. want to see somebody thrown through the announce table so they're setting up like okay like Solo started his whole new blood, bloodline where it has people from AEW like Jason Fatu um, Jacob Fatu sorry and then the Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa which were like indie wrestlers, and they're, they're they're great. They're great wrestlers, great performers, and they're they're doing this cool thing. Okay, so he's like, now I'm the new tribal chief, and if Roman Reigns has something he wants to say about it, then he can come step up. Nice. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, now they're they're starting the whole Roman Reigns as the face now, where he's going to be a fan favorite, which he's starting to get that way because he's he's great on the mic. Like, he's a good wrestler, too, so... I'm excited for that stuff and see what they're going to do uh, for that. And then uh, just so many so many things, like up-and-coming wrestlers, like Braun Breaker, which is, like, uh, Scott Steiner's son or grandson, hmm. and he's he's a beast. <laughs> Dude can run, like, 23 miles per... It's like having a big, stocky Tyree kill run in the ring. Jeez. And he can spear people, like, in half. You know, if you guys remember uh, Ryback, what was his name? Oh. Or Rhino? Rhino. Okay, yeah, Rhino. Rhino. That, that, the guy that used to gore people. So it's, like, more of, like, the intense spear, so. Nice. That's great. Yeah. So That's awesome, Wrestling dude. nerds out there, this is for you guys. <laughs> awesome. Probably going to see a lot of Ninja Turtles stuff. Yeah, Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. merch from us. Yeah, so yeah. keep an eye out for that. And uh, that's it for us. 